Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of new motors from MAD Components. For those of you who aren't familiar with MAD, they're a company based in China, been going about eight years, and they make motors and ESCs primarily for larger industrial, commercial and agricultural drones. Not so much the smaller drones that we use in FPV. But they have released two new motors for 5 inch freestyle and racing, a 2207.5 and a 2306. And I'm excited to see if any of that know-how that they've got from building really big motors has translated down to make something a little bit special in a smaller size. So let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. All right, so let's take a look at these motors on the bench, starting with the 2207.5. We've got a nice gray color scheme with red highlights and a lightweight cutout for the bell with lots of open area for cooling, which is good to see. We've got a two-piece bell construction, aluminum at the top and then a steel flux ring here, and you can clearly see the seam line between these two parts. This is the lightest weight way to make a motor because you've not got any extra material, but you have quite a thin line to join between the steel flux ring and the aluminium bell. And in a very hard crash, sometimes the steel flux ring can separate from the bell along this seam line. An alternative approach is a single piece bell where the aluminium extends all the way down over the flux ring. That adds durability, but also about a gram of weight overall. So. It's a trade-off and MAD have decided to go with the lightest possible weight construction here. Turning the motor over, you can see that we've got a 9x4mm bearing with an M3 shaft screw and that's Loctited in place. And they've also gone with quite thick magnets, you can see there, and that's actually inset into this steel flux ring, which is relatively thin. Now this is a trade-off as well. When you make the steel flux ring very thin, it reduces the weight of the motor, makes the motor very light, but it doesn't contain all of the magnetic field from the magnets. So you're losing some magnetic efficiency because some of the flux from the magnets is escaping outside of that steel flux ring. Ideally, you don't want to be able to detect too much magnetic force coming out of the, uh, out of the flux ring. You want that all contained and used to make torque in the motor. But again, it's a trade-off. You might be losing some flux, but you've also made the motor lighter weight. So we'll have to see how it performs on the thrust test stand to know the answer for sure. Looking inside the motor, so just taking the bell off here, we've got a steel washer and then behind that steel washer we have a little black o-ring down here to cushion the bell in a crash and that's really nice to see, just helps to protect the top bearing and make the motor last a little bit longer. There's also evidence of balancing compound on the motor here and also at the top, so they've balanced it at the bottom and at the top. I'm not sure if that's because they needed to add a lot of balancing compound to get this motor balanced or whether they are balancing it in multiple dimensions. But it's good to see that this motor has been dynamically balanced, so it should have very low vibration. Looking at the 2306 now, it's got identical construction to the 2207.5. One of the interesting things I noticed when I was looking at this is that it appears to have the same size magnets as the 2207.5. Obviously they're a little bit shorter because this is a 6mm stator rather than a 7.5mm stator, but the magnets are the same shape. And that's really interesting. With a larger diameter stator, I would have liked to have seen wider magnets so that the gap between the magnets was smaller. Let's take a look at this motor compared to another 23mm motor from RC and Power. And you can see that the RC and Power magnets are quite a bit wider. So they could have fit more magnet in this motor. And again, we're going to have to see how it performs on the thrust test stand to see if those narrow, thicker magnets are doing as good a job as a wider, smaller magnet. All right, let's pop these motors on the scales now, starting with the 2207.5. This is with five inch wires, comes in at 34.2 grams. And the 2306, also with five inch wires, comes in at exactly 33 grams. We have to start by looking at measured KV, and I measure this by running the motor full throttle without a prop at 10 volts, and then dividing the RPM it achieves by 10 to get the measured KV. And what we can see is that the 2207.5 1960 KV doesn't achieve 1960 KV, it's more like 1850, so it's quite a bit less than what's written on it, and that might mean that you feel like there's less top end than you would expect for a 1960 KV motor. The 2306, on the other hand, achieves 1920 kV. It's much closer to its 1960 kV rating, and so it's going to feel pretty similar to what you would expect for a 1960 kV motor. And this is why it's so important to do these tests. 
No matter what's written on the motor, it's the measured KV that's going to determine how the motor feels when you fly it. Now that we've measured the KV, it's time to take a look at the performance of this motor on the thrust test stand. And I measure thrust using a standard HQ 5x4.5x3 V1S test prop. I use the same prop on every motor and I've tested so many different 5 inch motors. This chart doesn't even show all the motors that I've tested. If you want to see the full range, you could go on AOS Labs, there's a summary of the results there. But if you want the full breakdown, that's available through my Patreon, and I'll put links to both AOS Labs and my Patreon down in the video description if you're interested. We can see the MAD motors highlighted here. The 2207.5 is in the top maybe 25% of motors I've tested. The 2306 is in the top sort of 40% of motors I've tested or so. They're doing really well. These are respectable results, but they don't quite have the performance to trouble the very top of this chart. As well as the maximum thrust that the motor can produce, we also care about its efficiency. A more efficient motor is not only going to allow us to fly for a slightly longer time, but it's also going to stay much cooler because all of the power that we supply to the motor has to go somewhere. And what doesn't go into mechanical power spinning the prop is dissipated as heat within the motor. That heats the motor up and a less efficient motor is more at risk of getting so hot that it smokes or just getting hot enough that its performance is adversely affected a more efficient motor is going to stay cooler and that's really important particularly for racing applications or aggressive freestyle where you're driving the motor really really hard. We can see that the MAD 2207.5 is reasonably efficient, it exceeds 78%. It's not efficient enough to trouble the motors at the very top of the chart again, the very best can achieve over 80% efficiency but 78% is okay. The 2306 is down at 74% efficient and that is a level at which I would slightly worry about it getting a bit warm if you're flying it very, very hard, particularly because it's quite a powerful motor for its size, but not so efficient. And that combination of high power and low efficiency is a recipe for getting quite warm. Now that we've looked at the thrust and efficiency of the motor with a prop, it's time to dig in and look at the magnetic performance of the motor with a flywheel dyno test. Here we use the motor to accelerate a flywheel of a known inertia and we measure the maximum torque that the motor is able to generate at 10,000 rpm, 50% throttle. This is a really good measure of how effectively the motor can convert electrical current into mechanical torque. Looking at the results, we see a bit of a split. The MAD 2207.5 is doing respectably well. It's slightly better than average, producing about 0.24 newton meters of torque. The 2306 is struggling on this test. It's only able to produce about 0.175 newton meters. And this speaks to the magnetic performance of the motor design. The 2207.5 is, is okay. It's an okay design, but it, it could be better. The very best motors at this size class can produce well in excess of 0.25 newton meters of torque. Even over 0.3 newton meters is possible. With the 2306 size, you wouldn't expect quite so much torque. It's a smaller stator, but still, you should be getting up above 0.2 newton meters with a really good magnetic design. And this speaks to what we were talking about in the bench review, where the flux ring isn't thick enough to fully contain the magnetic field, and you're losing some of that field. You see the result of that in this test. Bringing this back to the performance of the motor with a prop, we're going to look at the motor responsiveness. And this is how fast it can accelerate and decelerate my test prop from 10 to 50% throttle and back multiple times, and then we take the average. Motors can achieve anywhere from 100 to nearly 200,000 RPM per second in these types of accelerations and decelerations. The faster a motor can respond, the faster it can change thrust, the more stable your quad is going to be and the faster it's going to be able to follow your stick inputs. So motor responsiveness is absolutely key. Looking at the results, we see with everything taken into account, the torque of the motor, the inertia of the motor bell, the inertia of the prop, we can see that the MAD 2207.5 comes out pretty much exactly average in this motor responsiveness test. It's not particularly good, it's not particularly bad, right in the middle of the road. The 2306 motor actually performs better on this test than it did on the torque test. And this is likely because the prop acceleration occurs over a higher RPM range, where having a higher KV gives you a, a bit more of an advantage. So that helps it claw back some places, but it's still, it's still worse than average on this test overall. And it's, it's, performing, it's performing better than some 2306 motors, but worse than others. So coming in sort of middle of the road of the 2306s. 
So now it's time to wrap this all up into the normalized scores. And the way that I calculate these is by taking the performance of the motor on each parameter, thrust, efficiency, torque, and responsiveness, and dividing by average performance to give a score. An average motor gets a score of 100, a motor that's 10% better than average a score of 110, and a motor that's 10% worse than average gets a score of 90. We average all those scores together, and then we normalize by the weight of the motor. So a lighter weight motor gets its scores adjusted up, and a heavier motor gets its scores adjusted down. And again, that's done by the ratio of the motor weight to the average motor weight of all the motors that I've tested. And this allows both lightweight and heavyweight motors to compete on a level playing field. Looking at the results, the MAD FS2207.5 gets a score of 105, so it's performing 5% better than average overall, and about equivalent to something like the T-Motor Velux V3. Looking at the 2306, that gets a score of 95, so it's 5% worse than average, and it's performing pretty equivalently to something like the Flyfish Flash 2306. So where does that leave us? Well, I think for the 2207.5 motor, I would put that into the value category, by which I mean that it's a reasonable motor that you're gonna buy based on value. If the price is good and the availability is good where you are, then it could be a great choice, especially if it's coming in a bit cheaper than something like the T-Motor Velux V3, or it's more available. When we're talking about the 2306, if you know you want a 2306, and you're, that's all you're looking at, then it could be a good choice. Obviously the 2306 size doesn't tend to perform as well as something like a 2207 or a 2207.5, just because of the shape. But if you know you want a 2306, then again, you could buy the Mad Motor based on value. Look at something like the Flyfish Flash 2306. If the Mad Motor is coming in significantly cheaper or it's much more available, then it's definitely the one you're gonna go for, but it's all gonna come down to price and availability where you are. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found the results here useful and that it helps you make a buying decision as to whether these motors are the right ones for you. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and there are links down in the video description to where you can find more information and get the whole range of motor testing results on my Patreon. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.